Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our virtual worship service coming to you from the First Presbyterian Church in Peru, Indiana. I'm Pastor Steve Quinlan, and today is Palm Sunday. We're glad to be able to share this time of worship with you, even though our sanctuary is empty today. We know that many of you are joining us online through our Facebook page or our YouTube uh, channel. Some are viewing through our Comcast broadcast on channel 95 here in Peru. We're glad to have all of you with us this morning and we welcome you to this service. Now, we're going to be doing something a little bit different this morning. In fact, very different, something that we've never done before here at the First Presbyterian Church, and I think many churches have not had this experience before. We're going to be sharing together in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, and we're going to do that remotely and invite you to participate at home. So perhaps during the first part of this worship service, you might want to go to your pantry or your kitchen and find a a piece of bread or a cracker, something that you ordinarily eat and have around your house, and something to drink, some juice, maybe a little wine, or something else that is your ordinary everyday drink, and bring it with you in front of uh, your TV or your computer or laptop, wherever you're watching and joining with us this morning. And we're going to bless those elements a little bit later and share together in the sacrament in that manner. Now, normally we wouldn't do this, but we've been given a special dispensation and allowance to celebrate the sacrament this way by our denomination, the Presbyterian Church USA. And we're delighted that you can join us today for this time of worship and the celebration of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Now, the liturgy for worship this morning is taken from our hymnal. It's the Glory to God hymnal, which is the most recent hymnal in the Presbyterian Church USA. And I'll be sharing the liturgy from that hymnal. And uh, our technicians are going to intersperse the words on your screen when you have a congregational response with uh, my reading of uh, the texts and uh, prayers this morning. Just as a, a word of thanks, I want to say a special word of appreciation to our technical fellows that are here today. Uh, Glenn Russell has been helping, working with uh, our audio and uh, video production and our cameraman uh, on the floor of the sanctuary this morning is Jim Allison. We're very grateful to these gentlemen for sharing with us this morning and helping us make these broadcasts possible for you. So with that, let's pause for a moment and then we will worship together. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, 
by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, when we gather to worship, it's right that we should come with humility into the presence of God, acknowledging our sins and our failures, all of our shortcomings, naming them before God and before one another. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us for all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So with the confidence of the children of God, let us join together in a prayer of confession. Please join with me at home as we pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, Amen. Brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, and a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven, and be at peace. Amen. And now as we turn to a reading from the scriptures, I want to invite you to join me in a prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. This is Palm Sunday, and we are given in our revised common lectionary several choices in the way that we celebrate and worship this day. One is with the liturgy of the palms, Another is with the liturgy of the Passion. And we've chosen this morning the latter to celebrate the liturgy of the Passion. For today begins Holy Week, a week in which we remember the last days of our Lord Jesus Christ, what is commonly called his Passion as he moved through an hour of trial, through the celebration of the Lord's Supper on Holy Thursday, to his agony in the garden and death on Calvary on Good Friday. Then, through the Easter vigil, we pause and reflect on the meaning of Christ's death for us. And finally, on Easter, with the rising of the sun, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll be coming to you next week with a special Easter celebration here on these same online uh, channels and the same broadcast settings. Today, the passion of uh, the liturgy of the Passion leads us to this text, this reading, 
from the Gospel according to Matthew. Listen now to God's word. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after the other, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and having blessed it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And so ends our reading from the scriptures today. As I've said, this is an unusual occasion because we are all observing the necessary physical distance during this time of pandemic. We're not able to gather together physically in order to worship and celebrate the sacrament. But we can still gather together spiritually and by faith, we can join our hearts and minds in the presence of Christ and share in this sacred meal together on this day. And I invite you to do that as we share in the words of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper in just a few moments. Now, some may ask, how is it possible that we can celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper at a distance like this without actually being present when the bread is broken and when the cup is poured out. Well, let me first say a couple of things about how these actions that we take in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper acquire their meaning and significance for us. There's nothing magical about what we do when we celebrate a sacrament. And simply because I'm an ordained minister of the Word of God, that does not make me someone who, as a priest might consider himself, especially worthy to celebrate the sacrament. We are here all together as brothers and sisters in Christ. In our denomination, we understand that the celebration of the sacrament is something that needs to be authorized by the community of faith that uh, we worship together in. And so the community of faith, the First Presbyterian Church here, has authorized me 
by calling me to be their pastor to celebrate this sacrament. But our denomination under these particular circumstances has authorized us all to share in this sacrament with elements that we bring to our own tables in our own home. And the meaning, the significance of these uh, elements, this bread and this cup, or whatever elements you have gathered at home, is invested in the elements by you, by me. It is our faith that gives meaning to these elements that we, we share together, uh, gives meaning to this celebration, makes this something extraordinary, changing it from its ordinary use to this moment of sacramental significance. As a matter of fact, that's what the meaning of the word sacrament is. It's an ordinary uh, substance, an ordinary act, an everyday thing that is made especially holy and sacred by the faith that we invest in it. This bread that we break becomes for us the body of Christ because we believe that Jesus wills it to be so and is present here with us in and under that bread. We believe that this cup becomes for us the blood of Christ, the cup of the new covenant, in the same way. It is by our faith that these ordinary things are made sacraments and become extraordinary. And so today, as we celebrate this sacrament, believe that Jesus Christ is here, present with you, wherever you are. If you're in your home, if you're in your den, if you're in your living room or your kitchen, wherever you may be viewing this, if you believe that Christ is present with you, then through your faith, Jesus Christ is present and you can experience him as such. If you believe that this bread becomes the body of Christ for you, then it does so. And the same is true of the cup. Now some may say, we are not worthy to share in the sacrament in this way. I mean, I'm just sitting in my living room. I'm not in a, in a sacred space. I'm not with the body of Christ. But that's simply a matter of geography. That's simply a matter of space. How many times have we said, both to our children in children's sermons and when we talk to one another in our congregation, how many times have we said that the church is not a place, the church is not a building, the church is a community of believers. And that community doesn't disappear when we each go to our own place. It's not necessarily the gathering together that makes us the community of faith, but it is the common faith that we share and the common spirit that gives us life. That is the spirit of Christ who is with us so that wherever we are gathered in Christ's name, then Christ is there present with us. And so we're glad that you are able to share with us in this sacrament of the Lord's Supper this morning. This is a, a wonderful opportunity for us to see ourselves in a new light. Not only to see this uh, sharing in this sacrament in, in a new and different way, but to see ourselves in a new way. In the light of faith, in the light of God's truth, who we are, who we are, are the children of God. That's who, in fact, we belong to. Our Father in heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ, our nurturing parent, the Holy Spirit. We belong to God as God's family, as God's children, wherever we are. All of those who are worshiping in different places, 
all of those who are sharing in this Lord's Day celebration around the world, we are one body, one family with Jesus Christ, our elder brother. And we may say, where is Jesus Christ? Jesus is here among us. The kingdom of God, the presence of Christ is in our midst with you and with me this day. And so as we turn now to a celebration of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, remember that it's through the life and death and resurrection of Christ that you and I are made worthy. It's through our faith and our mutual believing that these elements, this bread and this cup, can become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. So we turn now to the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at the table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. And our Savior invites all those who seek him to share in the feast that he has prepared. The Lord be with you. And your response is, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator of the universe. You are our God, and we are the creatures of your hand. You made us from the dust of the earth, breathed into us the breath of life, and set us in your world to love and serve you. When we rejected your love and ignored your wisdom, you did not reject us. You loved us still and called us to turn again to you in obedience and in love. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the heavenly choirs, with all the faithful of every time and every place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, most holy God, for sending your Son, Jesus, to live among us full of grace and truth. He made you known to all who received him, sharing our joy and sorrow. He healed the sick, and was a friend of sinners. Obeying you, he took up his cross and died that we might live. We praise you that he overcame death and is risen to rule the world. He is still a friend of sinners. We trust him to overcome every power that can hurt or divide us. And we believe that when he comes in glory, we will celebrate victory with him. Therefore, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we take this bread and this cup and give you praise and thanksgiving. Believing Christ's promise of eternal life, we live in him and declare Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that this bread and this cup may be for us the body and blood of our Lord, and that we and all who share in this feast may be one in Christ and he with us. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, forever and ever. Hear us now as we pray the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our God, in addition to the prayer that Jesus taught us, we lift to you each our individual prayers this day. Look into our hearts and into our minds and see the concerns that we carry, the joys that we celebrate, the needs that we have. At this particular time, O oh God, we lift up to you all of those who are feeling alone and separated, those who are experiencing the pains of isolation. We pray especially for those who are fearful and anxious in this time, that you will give to all of us a sense of your peace and your presence. Lord God, we pray for those who are sick, who are struggling with illness at this time, whether it's the illness that comes through this pandemic or other illnesses or weaknesses in our bodies, those who are struggling with spiritual infirmity, who are dealing with discouragement, depression, loneliness. Lord God, Help each one with healing and comfort and strength. Gracious God, we pray especially today for the many women and men, doctors, nurses, caregivers of all kinds, those who are providing support and backup roles. We pray for all of those who are in harm's way, facing danger, for our sake, we pray that you will bless them, protect them, encourage and strengthen them, O oh God. We pray also, our Father, for the leaders of our community, our state and our nation. Help us all, O oh God, to follow the guidance that we receive from those who are professional and understand Gracious God, give our leaders wisdom and understanding and courage to act for the common good, even in these times of great distress. Lord God, these are our prayers this morning, and we gratefully lift them to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, my friends, as you are at home, I hope that you will join with me in sharing in this bread and this cup. You know, we're instructed in our uh, training as ministers that the elements that we use in the celebration of the sacrament should be common everyday things, not things that are prepared especially for this table. When Jesus was at the table with his disciples, they were eating a meal. 
and in the course of that meal, he took some of the bread. And I have some bread that we had on hand here this morning. And Jesus took the bread, and he gave thanks, and he blessed it, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. There, where you are this morning, take what you have and break it as one loaf being broken for us all, together in God's Spirit. And in the same way, after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave thanks and blessed it. And he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Whatever cup, whatever drink you have, let us drink together as the members of the body of Christ, investing in faith this cup as the blood of Christ. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us eat together. And in the same way, let us drink of Christ's cup together. Now, my friends, if you will, please join me in the prayer after the Lord's Supper as you see it on your screen. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that through your word and sacrament, you have given us your Son, who is the true bread of heaven and food of eternal life. So strengthen us in your service that our daily lives may show our thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, wherever you are this day, remember that though we break the bread as Christ's body, we, in fact, are the body of Christ. We are a living sacrament sent into this world to give ourselves for the sake of others, to be Christ's presence in our world, to our spouses, to our families, to our friends, to our communities. We are here as those who are a part of our Lord Jesus Christ, representing him, being his presence in our world, empowered by his spirit, strengthened by his love. Let us go now into the world in peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.